in our panel to discuss Biden's weak leadership and the latest happening in Israel with Lisa Daftari, counterterrorism and foreign policy expert. She's also an editor-in-chief for the Foreign Desk. Newsmax foreign policy analyst Waleed Ferris joins us as well. Waleed is the secretary for the Transatlantic Parliamentary Group and author of Iran, an imperialist republic and U.S. policy. Also with us, Ellie Kohanim. She's in Budapest, Hungary right now with the Center for Fundamental Rights. Um, uh, a group of experts on board here. Uh, Lisa, I want to start with you. President Biden has signaled incredible weakness. We've had multiple guests uh, support that today. His shocking evacuation of Afghanistan, his failure to quickly arm Ukraine following Russia, uh, allowing Russia there for a year to build up the defenses, his failure to deter China's threats and other steps, of course, that we talk about a lot here on Newsmax, have all opened the door to a potential world war. Uh, do you think that's an exaggeration or is that what you're seeing? Absolutely, particularly in the case of this war in Israel. It's mind boggling to me that anybody would deny uh, the, the fact that the Biden administration emboldened Iran and that Iran is behind this war completely. This is Iran's war against Israel, which is being fought by proxies on the ground. People want to pussyfoot around the $6 billion by defending the Biden administration. Well, let me tell you this. Whether it was the $6 billion or it was the last installment or it's the Palestinian aid that the Biden administration reinstated to the Palestinians after the Trump administration uh, stopped that aid because we knew it was going towards terrorism. All of that emboldened the regime, the fact that we stopped vital sanctions against Iran's regime, the fact that for three years the Biden administration has been begging pretty please, pretty please for an Iran nuclear deal. All of this sent the message to Iran that the Biden administration was not after curbing them, changing them or asking them for anything, but was after emboldening them and giving them more strength, more money, more power in the region. And that is exactly what we're seeing unfold in Israel in the last 48 hours. Well, I want to go to this. Uh, Biden gave six billion to Iran. This is remarkable as Iran, number one, continues to say that they will destroy Israel. Number two, are racing to build nuclear warheads and just weeks or months away from having the nuclear material to do so. Three, they're the top supplier of drones to, the, to Russia, which are killing innocent civilians there and soldiers alike. And four, they have open contracts out to kill U.S. leaders like President Trump, former President Trump, Mike Pompeo, John Bolton, and among others. This is not looking good. I want to get your thoughts. Well, this is not good. It has not been good since the signing of the original mothership, the Iran deal in 2015 under the Obama administration. And it continued to be very bad since the beginning of this administration. I don't want to go back to the withdrawal from Afghanistan, but the relentless stubborn stubbornness to go back and sign this deal, this deal that would provide has been providing and now is providing money to the uh, Iranian regime to do all of the matters that you and the panel have been discussing. But let me take advantage of that to respond to the cinema coming out of this administration saying that, oh, the money didn't arrive yet in, in Qatar or did not arrive yet in Iran, and therefore it's not responsible for what Iran is doing. Really? You have been negotiating. The administration has been negotiating with the Iranian regime. They don't send overnight $6 billion. Of course, there were talks between the two sides. And during those talks, the administration never mentioned to the Iranians that you need to stop funding Hamas, stop funding Hezbollah, and not waging uh, wars, not just against Israel, but, but, but against Arabs and Kurds and others. Of course, the administration knew what is the behavior of, uh, of the Iranian regime. And Iran, do we think that Iran, in the middle of negotiations, until they get the cash in their pockets, are going to wage such an operation? Of course not. So it's not about the $6 billion being used. It's about Iran knowing that it's going to get those $6 billion, that they are in Qatar, and therefore they wage their operation. All right, Ellie, I uh, want to get to this. If Saudi Arabia as well, they're, they're, they're at play here, if they are already showing such hostility to Israel in this unprovoked attack against it, why should the U.S. continue to support a treaty between the two countries at this point? Saudi is keeping oil prices very high. And by doing that, of course, who does it benefit? Well, Iran, which then has even more money to fund terrorism. It seems like that treaty doesn't make sense. Or is there something in there that you think is important to continue? We have to understand the situation with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in its full context, which is that the Biden administration came into office 
uh, stating that they want to make the Crown Prince MBS into a pariah. And uh, since that time, there has been a bit of, uh, of relationship building between Biden and MBS. But, you know, right now, the Saudis are feeling very abandoned by the United States under Joe Biden. And, uh, and so, you know, I cannot put all of this at the feet of the Saudis. The Saudis also need to be balancing their own self-interests here. I think what we're seeing right now is just the complete collapse of the Middle East uh, peace and stability due to the failures of the Biden administration. Most significantly, the fact that the Biden administration has been in talks with the Iranians, has released the $6 billion most recently. But also, since Joe Biden came into office, the Iranians are now $80 billion richer due to their oil sales, which uh, the sanctions that the United States is no longer enforcing, and the oil sales to China. And so all of this together has led to the suffering of the Israeli people that we've been witnessing the last 24 hours, the Iran-backed Hamas attack on Israel, the atrocities that these Hamas savage terrorists are committing against the Israeli people. All of this, uh, it really could have been preventable. And, uh, and so it's really time for some soul searching on the part of the Biden administration right now. Absolutely. Great point. Thank you so much, Lisa, Walid, and Ellie. We